What's going on everybody for Cryptocurrent? My name is Stephen Miller. I'm joined today by my co-host Chris Corneros. Chris, how you doing today? I'm doing well, Steve. Glad to be on the show. How you doing? Oh, it's another great day in crypto land, that's for sure. Um, we had a great interview from Richard yesterday with Aaron Tilton from SmartFi. If you haven't had a chance to check that out yet, please head on over to our YouTube channel. Check that out after we're done with this live stream, of course. But if you're new here, um, here at Cryptocurrent, we're all about bridging the gap between those who know very little about cryptocurrency and those um, that know quite a bit. So we want to be able to give you a fresh look into what's going on in the crypto landscape and also break it down for you so anybody can understand it. So if you are, um, again, new in the chat, feel free to ask us questions. We are more than happy to engage with you live and answer questions as we go along. But today's episode of Cryptocurrent Live, we've got a lot on deck. So we've got another great segment of Buy, Seller, Hodl where we're gonna be breaking down um, two pieces of news and determining whether or not they are buy, sell, or hodl worthy. Uh, we're gonna jump into another um, brave segment of Two Bulls, One Coin. And then we're going to be breaking down one of the most influential um, questions of the week as opposed to one of the most influential articles of the week before we wrap this thing up with what to watch for in the week ahead. So, Chris, I would love to just hand it over to you and see what we need to be talking about right now um, when it comes to buy, sell, or hodl. What do you have on deck for us today? So, today, uh, we got some great news today. PayPal is going to be rolling out buying, selling uh, crypto on their platform, first in the United Kingdom. And not to mention a few days ago, Venmo announced that they also are uh, allowing their users to buy, sell uh, crypto on their platform. And if you buy, I think it's like $25 or $50 of crypto on Venmo by the end of the month, then by October 15th, they'll send you $50 as a thank you, I guess, or as part of a promotion. And it, at first glance, seems great, right? Like your first thought is going to be, wow, the, a lot of people use Venmo. A lot of people use PayPal. I mean, PayPal is was the original peer-to-peer -peer kind of way to transfer money easily, kind of simply. It's obviously the how a lot of uh, platforms run. It helps them, you know, do transactions, whether that's on a peer level or if that's for businesses. But there's a side of it that a lot of these platforms are leaving out, and that's what I really want to get into, which is Venmo and PayPal and Cash App all these platforms where you can buy crypto, where you can sell crypto. One, you can't buy and sell all crypto. It's pretty much limited to like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, the the mainstays, we'll call them, within the crypto, crypto land, as Steve likes to call it. And, you know, it sounds great, right? Like it's opening it up to a wider, you know, array of people. It makes it so you can have all this crypto. What it doesn't say is that you can't actually transfer it. So I can't go and buy, let's say, $100 of Bitcoin in Venmo and then transfer it to my Bitcoin wallet. When I buy $100 of Bitcoin on Venmo, I have $100 kind of translated over to Bitcoin. So that amount will fluctuate in a dollar amount based on the price of Bitcoin. But it isn't actually my Bitcoin. It's more just cash that is being kind of valued within Bitcoin on the platform. And I think that's very misleading 
to say you can buy and sell crypto because you're not actually. You're I mean, but, yeah. but Chris, isn't that the same exact thing that we see going on over at places like, um, I don't know, Coinbase and Robinhood and any other exchange that wants you to believe that your crypto is your crypto? Oh, yeah, but I, I hold the same belief for all of them, which is if you can't go on the blockchain and see your wallet address and see your transaction, it's not actually yours. And I think that is, it is misleading, but the name of the section is buy, sell, or hodl. And personally, I'm actually leaning towards the buy side here because 99% of people who are going to use this and the people who are going to, that 99% are not the traditional crypto community. They, A, won't even realize the difference and B, they won't care. But because people are buying it, and because they don't actually own it, it's actually Venmo or Cash App or PayPal who owns it. And you're essentially just investing in what they own. That's just going to drive up the price because if more and more people buy, that means these platforms have to buy more Bitcoin, buy more Ethereum. And I think that is going to actually help the price. It'll help everyone within the crypto community. And it'll let people outside of it think, oh, I'm involved. I own Bitcoin. When, you know, us better red folks know that they don't actually own any Bitcoin. And see, that's the thing that's interesting about this to me. You know, we can, and and look, I'm in the camp of you should custody your own keys, you should custody your own crypto. But, because again, if you don't have access or ownership of your private keys, it's not yours. That's the way that we always teach things here at Cryptocurrent. But in my mind, this, to your point, is not bad, okay? Like, as much as we like to be very hard line against, you know, having other people custody your assets. The truth about this is, is that PayPal and Venmo and their entire conglomerate, they are one of the biggest payment providers slash payment gateways out there for people to be able to transfer money. Yeah, of course, like Cash App is a big player as well. But when I look at that entire landscape, the ability to do so and like invest, invest, in cryptocurrencies through Venmo, PayPal, and again, the whole thing is a massive gateway. It is just that. Like, we're opening this and making it more accessible to people. And I think that is one step in the right direction. I don't necessarily think it's going to be the be all end all. I think that eventually they may transition to a custodied system, but I think this is just the first stepping stone. Do you get that vibe or is that just me? Yeah, I mean, to me, this just seems like they want to kind of dip their toe in the water, gauge interest without really rolling out the technology they'll need to enable. Because essentially, if you want to transfer it, what they'll have to do is what like Coinbase does, which is you sign up for an account and they create wallets for you in every single coin that they have available. And I think what these platforms are trying to do is see, OK, you know, how many people are buying into this? And it's not even how much, it's how many, because there could be billions of dollars in transactions flying around on these platforms. But if it's only, let's say, 10,000 people, why would they set up wallets for everyone, right? That's an incredibly small minority. But if it's, say, you know, $10 million in transactions, but it's a million people doing it, then they have to think and say, okay, we have a million users now on our platform. This is probably worth it for us to look into what Coinbase does and set up wallets for everyone so then they can really transfer it. And I think that would actually be great because I think that's great actually for even the more traditional crypto community because if you can have essentially an actual Bitcoin or Ethereum wallet on PayPal, on Cash App, on Venmo, it's another way for you to actually liquidate what you're holding. And like we're seeing in El Salvador, it's another way where you could transfer your funds and the this is actually kind of a hot take that I just thought of. This could be a partial solution to Ethereum's gas fees. If you can kind of circumvent sending and, you know, sending Ethereum over Ethereum, but you're actually sending it over Venmo over PayPal, there's a chance that that drives down gas fees because there's another avenue. That being said, it's not that simple. Whether it makes a difference, only time will tell. But I think it is, you know, another solution. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think that the one thing that is missing from the take is this. At large, one of the reasons why people rely on something like Coinbase is because 
it is the simplest way to on-ramp your fiat. So when I say on-ramp or off-ramp, for those of you that are new to crypto, I'm referring to the fact that like to get your money into crypto, you need to, of course, start with fiat and you're typically moving that from your bank account. So by bridging your bank account to Coinbase, because they have the easiest bridging system in the world, that is your on-ramp to cryptocurrency. And it's also in the same way your off-ramp. With PayPal and Venmo, they are making it easier for you to on-ramp and off-ramp. But that only becomes the case when they actually have independent custody addresses. So, Chris, I don't do, I don't disagree with you for a second. I think that that is the right take to have. I think it's the future that we're headed toward. Um, but I agree with you. I think that, it, that this is a buy signal if there ever is one, um, especially for those big three that they're currently allowing you to purchase on the platform. But let's um, let's transition into our next buy seller hodl piece, and that of course is going to have to do with um, what's been going on for the last two days over at OpenSea. Um, OpenSea, if you are not aware, is the largest NFT marketplace in all of crypto, um, where basically you can go up and purchase NFTs, whether they're collectibles, trading cards, um, gaming assets, utility tokens, you name it. And this story broke. Um, I'm going to share my screen because I just think it's hysterical, um, if I'm being brutally honest. And it's that their higher up actual head of product used insider knowledge when buying NFTs on their platform. So how does this work is, is like the big question. Like, how is it that he did this? Um, and the reality is, is that Nate Champlain, the head of product or Chastain, excuse me, basically had a direct line into what was going to be featured on the front page of OpenSea, which is typically like, you know, where people go to see exactly what is currently most on trend. So he knew everything that was coming before it was actually going to hit market. He knew everything that was going to be promoted before it was actually promoted. And he capitalized on that. And what was the result? Well, the result was yesterday, OpenSea announced that they were parting ways um, with that executive who was caught trading those NFTs. So I guess my question to you, Chris, is first and foremost, is this going to be the last time that we see this happen? Uh, because I know that it's a, it's a very a very thin question. Like, yes, we probably, we probably think this is going to happen continuously forever. But is this the last time we're going to see this happen? And also, is it necessarily the, a bad thing that we're seeing this happen? What I, my initial thought is no, it's probably not the last time we'll see this happen. And I think it's a bad thing. Like I think insider trading is that it's happening, but I also am so sure that this has been happening for years in the crypto community. And in the same way that Nancy Pelosi has just been freaking, you know, 5,000% returns on her portfolio in the entirety of existence because she knows when the government is about to lock in certain military contracts and she just happens to invest millions of dollars in those companies right before they announce it. I think it's, I think it's a sign that crypto is not as far removed from traditional financial institutions as all of the tinfoil hats within the community like to think it is because this is something that happened in traditional stock markets for, you know, centuries. And it's something that's happening now in the crypto community. And let's be honest, although NFTs have been around for a little while, they really have only been a big thing for the last six months or so. And so basically six months into the most popular kind of or explosive growth period for NFTs and this is happening not the best sign, especially because it just goes to show the executives don't realize that on the blockchain, anyone can see everything. And when you're head of product, eh, you know, it's kind of obvious that you're going to know what's going on. Yeah. And, and look, here's the thing that pisses me off about the whole thing. It's like, we all know that insider trading has been around to your point for centuries. 
But in this world, like this is, I mean, you're going to see Nancy Pelosi get away with insider trading because she's Nancy Pelosi. She's, you know, the head of the house and has an inordinate amount of power. Just like any other person with an inordinate amount of power, they're going to abuse it and they're most of the time not going to get caught for it. It's a really an in, inconvenient truth. Um, not to call back to the Democratic Party too much. But my point is that in this space, we're going to see insider trading happen all over the place. And there are instances of it happening every day, whether you're talking about NFTs, you're talking about DeFi, you're talking about just cryptocurrency trading. All three, you have insider trading going on. But people are so freaking stupid that... They're willing to do this on the blockchain where, and I'm not making this up. This is a straight up fact. People on Twitter are the ones that caught him doing it. Okay. It wasn't like they had an internal audit and they turned out that Nate Chastain was um, insider trading NFTs. No, it was people from Twitter. People on crypto Twitter literally just did a couple searches looking at his ETH address and we're able to see based on the timestamps of when certain projects launched on OpenSea versus when his transactions were taking place that he was insider trading. We're not talking about rocket science. We're not talking about having to go through forensic analyses of what exactly happened. This is what happens on a distributed ledger. Everyone has access. Everyone can see it. It is the most transparent system there is. I cannot get more fervently angry when it comes to people showing their stupidity in orders of magnitude. Let's just go with that. So I am, yes, irritated about this, but I think that this kind of harkens back to no PR is bad PR or like any PR is good PR, that type of vibe. Because to me, I see it as a buy signal. You now have a whole bunch of people looking at OpenSea now. Being like, oh, well, I don't know what OpenSea is. What is OpenSea? Let me go check this out because this guy got caught being a douche. So he got caught being a douche. Now you can make money on NFTs because somebody isn't front running you. Um, that's kind of my take. And I'm I'm curious if there's more to it from your perspective, Chris. Do you think there's anything more to this story? I also think it's a buy. And to touch on transparency, I agree. You know, I think this is, it is the most transparent Kind of way to go about things with the distributed ledger and i was looking at an article earlier today kind of discussing you know we brought this up last week and quite a few times recently on this channel which is everything going on with the sec and targeting lending platforms and crypto you know block five coinbase's uh program that they're waiting to launch and are now waiting to launch because of the sec kind of threatening to sue but essentially the point of the article was saying that kind of counterintuitively decentralized lending platforms are actually safer, less risky and more transparent because you can see, okay, if you're lending or if you're borrowing money or you're lending money to, you know, through decentralized, whatever, you can actually see, okay, how are they generating this extra amount of capital to back that up? Because it's all on the blockchain. And I think to me, that's a huge buy signal. Because in traditional lending, right, we know that in theory, banks just have a large amount of cash in the background. That's kind of what backs up their loans. But you don't really know, right? In theory, these banks, yes, they're supposed to have a certain amount of cash, but I'm sure they're also growing their money in other ways outside of just lending. But you don't know. On the flip side, on the blockchain, you do know. And if you don't, it's not that difficult to go and figure it out because wallet addresses are public and the entire blockchain is public. So I think that is a buy signal because, and just beyond that, the fact that someone got caught insider trading less than 24 hours later removed from their post is just, is a huge kudos to the, not just crypto community, but OpenSea. They went in, they took action. They didn't come out with some BSPR statement that we're going to submit him to you know, training or sensitivity training, something like that, that a lot of traditional companies like to throw out when someone does a no-no. They just said, nope, you did this, you're done, you're out. And props to them, props to the crypto community for digging into this and figuring it out. But I think it's a positive sign of things to come in the direction we're going. 
I mean, it certainly shows that like in this world, there's a higher degree of expediency. Um, and I don't think that we're going to be, I guess, seeing these internal audits and internal trials um, when things like this occur in the future. I mean, it's going to be very quick and it's going to be almost painless to the communities that support them. Like they'll understand and like get an apology from the company. But this type of immediate action, frankly, is like ripping the bandage off. Um, it's it, it. I think it'll actually have a better long term effect. But look, we we've actually got a ton of show left um, ahead. So again, if you are new here, please do us a favor, press that subscribe button, click the bell, uh, make sure that you are getting notified anytime we come live here on um, on YouTube. But also give us a like if you think this um, information has been helpful to you so far. We've got a couple things more to go in the show, um, but that is our one ask of you because that allows us to know that we're doing our jobs well here and that ultimately you want to keep coming back for more content. So let's move into our favorite segment here. Two bulls, one coin, where every single week we take one shit coin and determine whether or not it actually is a shit coin. We get the opportunity to either roast it or uncover a little bit of truth and shed a little light on a project that maybe has a little bit of a false um, public understanding of it. We have a lot of fun with this segment, and arguably too much fun. Um, we like to consider this the ultimate moment of when dad's away, the kids will play. And I think that there is no more um, fitting project for the kids to cover today the dad will be probably pissed off at us for covering. Um, then this project. I can't believe we're freaking doing this today, man. I just, I can't. Hey, and what I'll say is the, the namesake of this segment goes perfectly with the coin we're covering today, which is come rocket. And if you are on social media at all, or you go through any of the Reddit to the moon uh, subreddits, I am sure that you are familiar with cum rocket whose so, coin is aptly named cummies so chris <laughs> before i get into any of this with you what are we doing like what is what is the show come to you know we're just having fun educating people and looking at something that could be a shit coin or not. I guess you'll just have to watch to the end of the segment to find out. Okay, so let's just dive into this for a second. Um, for those that don't know, Come Rocket is one of the first coins in crypto that's attempting to be an open source, decentralized version of OnlyFans. They're trying to empower um, adult film stars and SWs to move their content online in the form of NFTs and um, decentralized content and streaming. So there's a couple of net benefits to this. I think that, you know, you kind of need to consider just for the creators themselves and um, the adult film stars that are utilizing the platform. But at large, Chris, is this platform in use? Like, is it actually out there is it a functional piece of software or is it just bloatware and vapor at this current moment so from the brief kind of research i did into this looked through their website looked at what they offer kind of their philosophy where they hope to go it seems like this is fully functional if you were an attractive person who wanted to you know, make a little money on the side. In theory, you could go to Come Rocket right now and create an account and start posting content. You can start, you know, doing live streams, posting videos and selling exclusive NFT content. So it seems to me it's functional. So it is functional. I would not encourage you go and look up their exchange platform that they're currently in the process of fully developing. I'm not going to share the name of it. I just, I can't with any good conscience. But when I see this project being, I mean, like, I think it was back in like, when was this? This had to have been back in August. No, actually it was in April. Um, in oh, yeah, April, this is, this is in the spring. Yeah. In April, they already had 12,500 holders. And this was like just shortly after launch. Um, to me, that's already a pretty promising indicator. And especially this won't just be another meme coin. 
Um, so again, that's one of the things in this segment that we get a little bit lost on sometimes is like we will oftentimes cover a meme coin and determine whether or not it's actually a meme coin or if there's some type of utility to it. Um, on an upcoming episode, we're going to do um, UFO token, which straight away started as a meme. It went under the ticker UFO and it labeled itself itself the truth. It has since evolved into something different. We'll talk about that on a different episode. But in this case, people, I think, gave this thing a connotation that it was a meme coin from the jump, but it never was actually meant to be, um, which I think is very interesting when you're looking at the overall development of it. But if you do a little bit more diligence into the platform and you look up at their website, don't go look at it too closely or for too long extended periods of time. Um, a doctor may advise you otherwise on that one. But the point is, is like, there's material here. There's like actual content. And we all know that content is king, regardless of how NSFW that content is. So, Chris, my question from here is, is this something that's actually benefiting the people, like the content creators themselves? Or is it just um, screen time that we're talking about here? Is it just like them trying to get a little bit more PR? What is your vibe? I think it benefits creators in the same way that YouTube and Facebook and what Mixer tried to do to Twitch. So this is essentially an alternative. Um, it, it, it's an alternative platform for NSFW creators to OnlyFans, right? It's trying to take away, okay, like, for example, we talked about this a few weeks ago, which is OnlyFans for a period had announced they were going to be banning NSFW content. Well, a lot of the creators on that platform, that is either A, their biggest source of income or B, their only source of income. So when you get rid of that, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, there were some other alternatives that have been around for a while, but there's a reason OnlyFans became the most popular, right? These other platforms weren't really for the creators. They were trying to help whoever was creating the platform. And I think what Come Rocket is trying to do is create an alternative that, okay, in the event that you have these larger platforms that are just going to, you know, fully shut things down, there is somewhere else you can go. And not only that, they're fleshing it out so that there are aspects of it that are better, right? You have that ability where you can send, you know, your subscribers or whatever they're called, you can send them NFT content so that way that person knows they're the only one with that picture with that video or whatever they're receiving and i think that is incredibly valuable in this space yeah so let me take you one layer deeper here chris and i don't mean to like you know go too under the covers with you on this i i, I really want to try to stay above board um stay on top because, of the sheets, i gotcha because there are too many dad jokes i can crack in this um there are three really big things that I look at when I'm doing my diligence on a coin, right? Um, I typically will look at the security and the audit of the actual project. I'll look at the team for, you know, a pretty solid minute. And then I'll also look at the utility. Those three things on their own can help me determine and can help a lot of people determine whether or not something is, is a shit coin or not. Um, in the case of Comrocket, Solidity Finance did their audit. Solidity Finance is a really reputable um, Ethereum auditor out there within the crypto space, which means that they went behind the scenes and audited the entire smart contract from start to finish, have looked at the software, have looked at the code, and have determined that it is, in fact, functional and successful so software, and basically determined that the, the liquidity of the protocol is locked, meaning that it's not going to be um, at risk. The next piece on the team is is twofold. Normally, I would tell you that the following is a bad thing. This team is actually very deeply rooted in the adult film industry, meaning that it's actually backed by the talent that is using it. I'm not sure, like, again, this is a two, it's a double edged sword, right? Like, you would normally think, oh, why would I ever want to trust porn stars with control of my tech project? Doesn't make a lot of sense. But the reality is, is that if you were starting a project around the food industry in, in crypto or in tech, you would want somebody who has longstanding um, experience in the food industry 
on your team to not only relate to the problems, but to the ways that this can solve those problems. Um, so to me, the fact that this was started by um, people in the adult film industry, actors and actresses, not exclusively one way or the other, but to re-empower those individuals, that to me is a really good sign. Uh, but also there's actual utility here. And people don't give projects enough credit, especially when they go under the title Cummies, for the fact that like you can use these credits for purchasing content, tipping and messaging content creators, and even making it so that like the holders of these coins can reap um, tax rewards most of the time because it can be documented as expense. The last thing is you can stake and burn this token. So right now, it, like direct quote from their site is that 2.5% of every transaction gets redistributed to holders and in, in proportion to their holdings. And then 2.5% of every transaction is burnt, meaning that the supply is constantly becoming more scarce. Now, there is something to be said of a um, an adult film site incorporating, you know, the language of burning into their um, overall, you know, website. And I'm not necessarily sure that's a good thing, but I think that when you look at this at large, this tells me this is not a shit coin, but I'm going to take it one step deeper. In 2015, there was a film, actually a documentary, put out by Rashida Jones, who's a really famous comedian and actress. Um, she produced the film, and it was all about the terrible, terrible conditions that exist in the adult film industry, whether it's for amateurs or stars. And I will tell you that this project not only enables adult actresses and actors in a way that definitely reduces the degree of exploitation, but empowers them to do their own work in the way that they want to in safe conditions and doing things above board, but also having better engagement opportunities with fans of this sort of material. If you have not seen that film called Hot Girls Wanted, I really do recommend that you go see it. Um, it's available on Netflix. It was produced by Netflix in 2015. And it's eye-opening to what these content creators have gone through. And it's one of the reasons why I have no issue with this being out there in the world. I think it, it's going to empower those content creators and make being in SW a lot safer for them. Um, so my early verdict is that this is not a shitcoin in the slightest. Um, Chris, do you agree with that or do you have an additional take to add? Yeah, I definitely, I agree, I think, right? At first look, I agree. Something I want to kind of touch on what you just said, which is that, you know, 2.5% of every transaction is redistributed to everybody who's holding in proportion to what they're holding. I think that is the key here as to why, as to how it is starting to solve a lot of the issues that, you know, were brought up in films like Hot Girls Wanted and have been actually incredibly talked about this year in the news. You know, that Black and Orange website that is very famous in the space, they announced that they were basically banning all content unless it was a verified user. And the reason they were doing that was because of exploitation and because, you know, Mia Khalifa, who's a very famous star in that space, came out and basically said how, you know, she was for a few years, like the most widely known prolific star in the space, but she had made like $12,000 from just that, not including, you know, obviously endorsements, things outside, but from being, you know, one of the most prolific actresses in everything seen everywhere, she only made $12,000. And so she had no stake in any of the sites hosting content, including her. The production, you know, we see a lot in traditional movies, people get cuts of box office, whatever, if they're an actor, she got none of the production kind of payouts. And I think Come Rocket is effectively solving that, right? Because it's somewhat decentralized, you know, if it has a website and it's managed by a company, it's not truly decentralized, but it's heading there. And I think it's doing a good job of kind of including the people that, you know, are the product, but create the product. It's giving them not just a voice in how things will go, 
but it's also giving them a stake in it, right? If you include people in something, even if they're not building a project, but they have, you know, a vested interest in it, it'll make them want to work harder to get it to succeed. And I think that is truly the piece that makes it less of a shit coin because it's involving everyone. Yeah. And look, if you're interested in hearing more about Mia Khalifa's story, again, go um, watch the documentary on Netflix of Hot Girls Wanted. She's the centerpiece of that documentary um, as it is. But the last piece that I will tell you is this. We both agreed this is not a shit coin. But that does not mean that we are sitting here endorsing you to go and purchase this or invest in it. Do your own research. We are not financial advisors. We are strictly your crypto commentators and occasional, um, I don't know the right way to say this. Let's just call it internet assholes um, who are doing things and saying stuff about coins in this segment. But the reason why I'm more so I'm telling you like this may not be the right investment opportunity for you is because it really only saw meteoric gains when people saw it as a joke. And if there's any one thing that we want you to take out of this segment this week is this is actually not a joke. This is a very real thing that is helping solve a real problem in the world. And while that in and of itself is worth investing in if you want to actually help solve this problem, don't do it if if you haven't done your research. You need to, this is a project you need to do more research into for sure if you're going to make that investment. But look, that has been another great segment of Two Bulls, One Coin. Um, Chris, we have one last thing that we're going to do before we tie this one off this week because we're uh, going to cut this one a little bit short. In place of the Aftershock segment this week, I have one question for you, and it has to do with the market top. Market top indicators exist out there on sites like ccbi.info where they have you know big indicators that have typically tracked whether or not the market has peaked and whether we're headed into a bear market. And the mo one of the most known ones is this chart where we get to retail FOMO being the thing that sends us to that peak. And my question this week that I want to jump into is, is the new market top indicator in the new world that we're currently living in celebrity buy-in? Is it that when we start seeing all sorts of celebrities jumping into crypto, that that is when we are actually effectively at the market top. Um, in recent weeks and days, actually, let's start here. We've seen the likes of Reese Witherspoon and Paris Hilton come out in endorsement of crypto. Reese Witherspoon saying specifically that she had just invested and bought her first Ethereum the other week. Um, this was back at the beginning of September. And the same exact day, Paris Hilton comes out and says that she loves Bitcoin um, after retweeting and quoting Michael Saylor. There's a lot more beyond this. So even just yesterday, it was announced that Katy Perry, Nas, Jason Derulo, among a number of other high level uh, musicians and people within the music industry, including the likes of the Chainsmokers, Jason um, Pusha T, Steve Aoki, Linkin Park, Disclosure, they're all jumping behind the audio platform Audius, which we've spoken about on different um, episodes of the show, but they're a streaming platform that is decentralized that's rivaling that of Spotify. It's interesting because I think that if you would put this question in front of me back in 2017, I would tell you it's a definitive yes. My question for you, Chris, is, is this a top indicator now that we're starting to see this many celebrities jump in? I don't necessarily think celebrities joining is a top indicator. I think of it as an indicator that we are heading to the top. Because in the same way, I forget his name, but the I think he was an O lineman for the Panthers who last fall, was it 2020 fall? converted like a third or half of his salary, asked that it was paid out in Bitcoin. That was when it was still, you know, well below 20K a coin. January came and then he became the highest paid NFL player. It, to me, like 
that is a perfect example, right? Because that was a celebrity, got a ton of, he actually isn't even like a celebrity. He wasn't, you know, the Tom Brady's of the NFL. This is an O-lineman. And the reality is, is I bet that most people couldn't name a single O-lineman in the NFL outside of Michael Orr, who may not even be in the NFL anymore, and outside of the best lineman on your favorite NFL team. But it got a ton of media coverage. Everybody was talking about it. And then January came around and everyone talked about it more because they realized that this guy became the highest paid NFL player last year because of what he had done. And the reason I really think it is a perfect example of how it's not necessarily a top indicator, but that we're heading to the top is that it drove, it ended up kind of bringing attention and bringing in non-traditional crypto investors, right? And when I say non-traditional crypto, I mean people outside of the space, so retail, traditional finance, but not traditional to crypto. And I think that is how celebrities tie in is you have millions of people who kind of subscribe to this American royalty, which is the celebrity lifestyle. And all they do is follow them. You see the success of shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians. You know, your mom, your dad, your friends, coworkers that aren't in the crypto space are like, huh. Reese Witherspoon and Paris Hilton are in crypto now? Well, maybe I should take a look at it. Oh, it's worth so much. Oh, but I'll just put $100 in. Well, if a few million people put $100 in, that is going to start jacking up the prices of a lot of these coins. And for us who've been in it for a while, I'm not going to sell because I see Reese Witherspoon getting in. This is when I'm either going to accumulate more or just hold because I'm expecting a price spike now. Yeah, I think that when I'm looking at this as a trend, I think that it's very clear that this is something that is ticking up. Um, You don't see them coming in like fives and tens, and it's not a trend. We've had a couple happen over the last, like, call it the last year. Um, That's probably the most fair timeline to judge this on. But when I'm looking at the greater marketplace, I see this as kind of like the calm before the storm, right? Influence is typically the thing that pre- like is the preliminary to massive rise. And when I see people like Russell Okung, who's the um, O-lineman that you were talking about from the Panthers, making that wave in the NFL, and I actually think that was like closer to the end of 2019 when he did that. I think you're... Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I I think it was the end of 2019. And here's the reason. We have since started to see more and more, more and more and more players in the NFL adopting the same strategy. Okay. Trevor Lawrence, when he signed with the uh, the Jaguars, right at the beginning of the season, he he decided to take his um, bonus in Bitcoin. You have Sean Culkin, who's the tight end for uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. He is taking, I think, over half of his salary in Bitcoin. These things are indicators that the more you see the people in the spotlight adopting it, like Tom Brady and Gronk, who both have NFT projects out and have made partnerships partnerships with FTX. You see um, Steph Curry jumping in um, with NFTs and FTX. The more we see people of influence jumping into this space, the more of their followers get exposure. And those followers will eventually start like biting at that bait and will start getting in themselves. And that's how these influencers get propped up again. My caution to everybody that's listening right now is start watching for the signs. This is a sign. That's what this is. Um, Chris, what do you think is going to be the indicator? What is it? What is it that people need to watch it will indicate that we're actually at market top if this is one of the four horsemen of the top, if you will. Hmm. See, for me, that's a tough question because, you know, the last bull cycle, it was obvious when we hit the top. Bitcoin hit 20K. Everyone freaked out. The Winklevoss twins became the first crypto billionaires and then everyone sold. But that was kind of the last top indicator. And in the same vein, or sorry, different vein, this bull cycle is very different, right? You have literally thousands of more coins now available. 
you have a way more complicated ecosystem because of how much the government is getting involved with trying to regulate. You have different exchanges popping up every day. It's a lot more complex now. And to me, I think, you know, I've said this a few times, which is you at the end of the day, and as much as the crypto community likes to think they're separate and unique and special because they found all this stuff before everyone else, at the end of the day, the crypto community is an incredibly small minority in the world. And so to me, the top indicator will be when these celebrities kind of start selling because that's when a lot of retail will start selling. And so if you start to hear rumors that there are these mass sell-offs, that's the top because crypto, the community itself, quite frankly, doesn't have enough money to hold a lot of these coins at peak value or push them back up. You need people who just genuinely don't understand a lot of it to invest and kind of listen to other people. That's how it works, right? It's a volume game because you still, whales and crypto are people with, you know, they have a billion invested, right? But there aren't many people who individually do. It's a lot of these large companies and even a whale, yes, they can influence things. But at the end of the day, it's only a billion dollars. And you look at traditional economies and markets, we're talking in the terms of like tens of trillions. And so if a billion is a lot in crypto, that's kind of something to put things in perspective. So to me, the top will be when you see celebrities start to sell off or kind of really talk poorly about it, because that's when volume plays in and their followers in the same way that they'll pump it when they like it will also lower the price when they don't. But to add on to what you were saying earlier about caution, one thing I do want to caution people about is we're saying that, you know, this is one of the four horsemen. Celebrities getting into crypto or certain coins is one of the four horsemen that, you know, the top is coming. To me, it's also, you need to be careful, right? Because we've also seen a lot of pump and dump schemes. And this has happened with a lot of meme coins, a lot of shit coins where celebrities have a lot of money or a lot of just essentially free money, right? These coins will pay out influencers a ton of the coin and say, hey, I want you to promote this on your socials. And then they'll pump it, a bunch of people buy in and they're selling as soon as it hits the top. So you need to be careful, right? It's a positive indicator. Celebrities endorsing a coin is a positive indicator with larger coins that have, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of holders. But if they're, a, you know, pumping a coin and promoting one that is relatively unknown or smaller, you need to be careful. And that's kind of plays into our mantra on this channel, on this show of do your own research. Just because a celebrity talks about something doesn't mean they know anything about it. Shout out to Nicki Minaj. So look, the bigger message is exercise caution. What I want to point out to our uh, viewers right now is one of the most powerful tools that can help you to start to understand when a top is coming. And that's something that we've talked about on Clubhouse before, if you've joined one of our Clubhouse sessions, and that is um, the CB CBBI.info indicator system. It was something that was built uh, by the team over at Colin Top. Colin talks crypto, um, I think in the last two years, but effectively it's a tool that they developed to determine, okay, how confident are we that we're at the peak? And what this does is it basically calls off of a portfolio of different metrics to and averages them to determine whether or not we're at the peak. Right now on today's date, we're showing a confidence index of 57 out of 100. This is pulling from literally 11 different indicators. So there are like all these different tracking mechanisms to figure out, okay, are we at the top? But when you look at the way this thing is aggregated in the past, this is probably one of my favorite charts, is how accurate the CBBI has been historically. You're seeing Bitcoin's price here in yellow as we're kind of letting it hover over. And then the CBBI confidence indicator is mapped here. When CBBI gets up to 100, it's at peak. And you see where we were when we caught the peak for Bitcoin in the end of 2013 going into 2014 and then the end of 2017 going into 2018. CBBI was spiked. If you look at where we are right now in the current um, cycle, we're not near. I mean, yes, like when we were up at 
sixty thousand the last time, CBBI was like at seventy, but it didn't top. We didn't see a true top here. Right now, the CBBI is sitting around fifty seven, yet we're looking pretty okay on on the Bitcoin price side. So to me, I don't know. I don't think the top is in, but I think that tools like this can be a great research, uh, great research, great research um, asset to have on your side. So. Again, you can find that up at cbbi.info. Um, but again, do your research, do yourself a favor, look into some of these other indicators like the Peel Multiple, the Golden 51 to 49% ratio, um, and even the Pi Cycle Top Indicator. A lot of these things can be really helpful to you in, at the end of the day, uh, but we want you to exercise caution when we're talking about any of these types of um, top indicators. So yeah. look, Chris, I think that just about does it for us here today. Before we go, I want to remind our audience again, we just had a great episode come out uh, with Aaron Tilton from SmartFi just yesterday that Richard had on the show. Um, check that out. Upcoming on the Cryptocurrent Podcast on Monday, we have Russell LaCour from Tantra Labs dropping in. And next Thursday, we have um, Cryptogenic, who is one of the co-founders of Sync Network dropping in. We also have a lot of other great written content that's going to be popping up on crypto-current.co. And you can also, of course, follow us at our socials for Twitter and Instagram that you'll find up above. Um, please do us a favor again. If you've enjoyed this content, subscribe, click that bell, get notifications whenever we post new content. Like the video if we ha had any um, impact on your crypto future today. But also, please feel free to follow us our handles are on screen right now one more time for you. Um, but as we wrap this thing up, in the next week, there are also a couple other big events going on. So in New York, um, this upcoming week on the 20th um, is kicking off Mainnet Conference by Masari. Um, it's one of the biggest crypto conferences of the year. Then also on the 22nd, um, PancakeSwap is planning on opening its NFT marketplace. So a lot of exciting stuff happening in the crypto space right now. Uh, but we're here every single Tuesday and Friday to give you more info on exactly what's coming up, what's happening now, and what you should be looking out for. So again, that's been another episode of Cryptocurrent Live for you. I've been Stephen Miller. He's been Chris Corneros. And we will see you next time. Stay Cryptocurrent. Bye, all.